Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm AST and in this video I'm going to be creating an analog app and I'm going to be adding PrimeNG and I'm going to be deploying it to Netlify. So if you're interested, keep on watching. I'm going to go to GitHub organization, which is additional one that I created, where I'm going to be storing all the repos related to things that I show in my YouTube videos. So here I'm going to um, create a new repo. Yeah, there are more of them, but um, I'm just going to be slowly moving them. I think it will be easier to find this way. So what should I call this one? Analog 3S, I suppose. Analog 3S. No, I like it like that better. And then it's going to be PrimeNG and then Netlify. Analog PrimeNG and Netlify. Actually copy this. It's going to be public one. And let's create the repo. Now in my local machine, I have a designated spot. So I'm going to initialize the repo here. So in my main folder, I'm going to open up the bash and it's going to go into the other monitor, but I'm used to that. It always goes to the main monitor. So make it a bit bigger, well, a lot bigger <laughs> uh, for video and in the official docs I'm gonna read the docs and getting started I'm gonna copy the first command I am using npm and let's see npm create analog latest what did I say I'm gonna call it um, analog with uh, prime ng okay Full stack application, would you like to add Tailwind? I'm going to say no for this one because I'm adding PrimeNG. I don't use Tailwind altogether, but I definitely don't need it in this case. So no, I'm pretty sure. Let's open it in another window. Pretty sure that I have, uh, yep, a Git file, but I don't need it. So I'm just going to get the contents and I'm going to put them in my folder. There are other ways of doing this. That's just my way. I'm not saying that you have to do this. That so far is personal preference. Just setting up the repo and the project in my repo. Anyone can do that in a way they prefer. And now over here, let's open it in Visual Studio Code. Analog.js version is okay. Angular is okay. Mm -hmm. Making sure I don't have dependencies that I don't need. I don't see NX. Now, specifically the NX dependencies, there are a few of them that I will actually set to version 19 because I did that in my build with analog repo for the open source project over there with analog. And I remember I had specific issues with those and I had to set them up to version 19 so that I don't get uh, dependencies, you know, not getting along with each other and things like that here. And then I'm adding NX feed, which is going to be 19 also and NX. I just wanted to make sure that those three are set to 19 already because I do remember, I do remember them giving me a bit of an inconvenience before. So after adding them, I'm probably going to need to add more, but let's just save it before I run npm install. But it's pretty cool that I already have pretty much all of them, uh, the Angular, all the ones are version 18. That's that's pretty cool. I was actually prepared to change all of them, but uh, I don't really need to change a lot over here. So let's see what npm install is going to come up with. I'm definitely going to add some more, but we'll see after the installation is done what else it's missing and um, I'll need to add it. Mm, probably needed to add Angular SDK. Yeah, I should have just shoved it in there as I'm adding the dependencies manually anyways, but okay. So right now there are no issues with dependencies. Installing PrimeNG. Okay, so npm install PrimeNG. Okay, so let's go with Prime icons. ng add. Okay. 
triangular. It's okay. I think it might be okay. So I'm just going to start the app with npm start just to see if uh, the initial setup is okay. Okay, there we go. We got the analog app going. Hey, look at the cute count. So what I want to do here, and that is something that I really like about analog is that I can go into the index HTML and I can just change this to SCSS. Of course, now it's going to complain because I need to rename it over here. And I need to make sure that this one is okay. Probably gonna need to stop the server and start again. Okay, so that's it. That's all I needed to do. I needed to stop and start the server again, and it is picking up on the styles. Now I'm probably gonna change the formatting to SCSS, but I'm not gonna focus on this in this video since uh, there is still more that I need to do in terms of setting up Prime NG. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove all the button styles over here because I'm gonna check to see if uh, when I add the Prime NG button, if it's gonna have its styles. Now I'm gonna grab the imports for the uh, Prime NG themes and um, I'm gonna add them in my styles a CSS file. That is not a theme that I usually use. I'm gonna go into theming and the one that I like to grab is MD Dark Purple. Yeah, I'm gonna actually change it over there also. Another import that I wanna add here is for the icons. Let's open this in another window, Prime Icons, and I did that already, I did install them. I need to add the import, the style CSS, so all in all I have those imports. Now I'm going to comment the light one out because I'm going to be dealing with theming in another video. Let's go into pages and index page. I'm gonna first of all replace this with the Prime NG button. So let's just try and do this and if something is missing I'm gonna add it along the way. Components and then we'll go into a button. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna need to add my imports. Okay, button module from Prime NG module and this one is gonna be instead of a button it's gonna be a P button pretty sure it's a P button now I already see the styles from the Prime NG button already picking up over here but just to make it abundantly clear <laughs> that I am using Prime NG I'm gonna actually add a tooltip tooltip module and we're gonna go into the index page just below the button module gonna add the tooltip module call for it i want it to be top okay and where is the button the button click click and all the lovely stuff not there and all the lovely stuff and i'm gonna should i just leave it like that okay yeah i'm just gonna leave it enter your username wait that is very interesting it's not the ideal placement for it and why is it um something is missing Make sure to add provide animations async in the providers array in appconfig.ts. So far, it's pretty nice and easy to do everything, even on Windows. The problem comes when I try to build the app locally. So let's just do npm run build npm run build and this is where i usually get um, some issues on windows i wouldn't call this a blocking error because it's not exactly blocking me i'm still able to do what i want to do so let's have a look over here yep the same thing module not found 
SCD and uh, yeah okay so I am used to this error I actually don't really pay a lot of attention to it needless to say that yes I did try installing package and that did not make any difference it did not make an error go away but I do want to emphasize on the message that you can see right below the error and it says server has been successfully built which means that error does show there but it doesn't prevent me from doing anything and on Netlify the build goes okay Let's go on to Netlify and I'm gonna add a new site, import from an existing project from GitHub. Now I'm gonna check the documentation because I think deployment providers, that's all I need to do. I basically need to set the publish directory to this analog public and then the functions directory to this analog. So I'm going to copy this in a moment. But before I get there, let's just um, find the repo, which is analog prime ng netlify uh, base directory. Am I using a subfolder here? No, I'm not using a subfolder. So base directory is going to stay just the way that it is. Mm, publish directory, I'm going to set to this analog public. And okay, publish directory, let's get onto it. Publish directory, uh, this analog public and functions directory, which I'm gonna copy from here. Okay. I don't need to set up a Netlify TOML file, which I would usually do for an Angular app because everything is already handled by analog. The only thing that I need to do is actually, I need to remove the Angular runtime, but I don't see I don't see anything on this screen that is allowing me to remove the angular runtime so I'll have to do it in a moment so the first one I will just uh, run it like this so yeah the most important parts to focus on over here is that the publish directory has to has to be set to dist analog.public and the functions directory needs to be set to dist.analog which is explained in the docs and now I'm going to run this deploy, but I'm going to run into an error because of the Angular runtime, which I'm going to remove in a moment, but let's just run the deploy as it is right now, because this, uh, as far as I can tell, this screen didn't allow me to remove the Angular runtime. So I'm just going to let it run this first time. And um, actually I can have a look at what's going on. I mean, because I'm curious anyways. And uh, at some point I'm expecting the error. Okay, and there we go. Deploy failed due to an error. Um, Netlify Angular Runtime plugin. So what I need to do here is I go into site configuration and um, build and deploy. And over here we have the Angular Runtime. I need to remove it. Again, for analog, I don't need the Angular Runtime because analog handles everything. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to go into deploys and trigger a deploy, deploy site. Okay, and now I can see already that I'm going beyond what was happening before. Building the SSR bundle for production. And there we go. Now, um, I actually wanted to continue looking at this <laughs> before I get, um, okay. Okay, and now I'm gonna go into the analog and everything looks fine. Netlify deployment, pretty cool, pretty simple. If I go into the deploy, I can see the deploy summary and I can see one function deployed. And uh, I have been trying to look at this function, but I don't see it over here. But what I figure is that um, this function is handling the server side rendering, the Lambda function. It's not an edge function, it's just a custom function. That's the function, it is server. That is why I don't need the Angular runtime. I wish I could explore it further, but even if I don't, I already know it's there. And uh, for me, that's like good enough. I just, I know that my uh, server side rendering is handled. So that's pretty, pretty cool. But that is all for this video. Have a look at the rest of the videos on my YouTube channel. A lot of them are on Angular, some are analog, some are on open source. So have a look. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.